Okay, today we're going to take a look at the Duratron pinball machine. And I have this uh, list of robot themed pinball machines that I made a long time ago. Let's see, the Duratron came in a two player and a four player mode. The two player mode was made by Gottlieb in 1974 and the four player mode in 1975. Um, they changed the name in the four player mode to Magnetron. Same machine, just added two more mechanical displays. And on this one, of course, you push your button to select whether you're going to have one player or two players to reset. It'll have a match score number. It'll show whether you've selected one or two players. Here's where you have your credits or games won, if you will. And let's see, let's hit the load button. So our scores of zero down now, and here you can see because of the comma, you can go up to basically all the way to 99,999, I guess would be your top score that you could achieve on this machine, which is quite a step up from the max score of this one being 1,999. Every year they, they would get higher and higher. By the time they started going to the fluorescent displays and they went even higher, and by the time they went to these machines from the mid 80s, they were in the billions. So I guess they were thinking people would play machines that had higher scores, which is crazy. Now you notice that this machine automatically loaded the ball at this point. It no longer was a manual mechanical loader like Egghead had. And um, also an Egghead, if it ever gets tilted, the owner of the machine that has a key to get inside the coin box could reset a tilt. That was the only way you could do it. On most other machines after that period you could put in more money and just start a new game and the tilt would clear. In some cases just turning the machine off and then back on again. Okay, one of the main objects of this game are going to be these three gates that you see up at the top, the A, B, and C. Uh, rolling a ball over the gates. If you can get the ball over all three gates it's going to give you extra points and when you're playing. And there's also these targets that give you a thousand points when they're lit if you hit them. You have a, a captive ball which will start walking your player around this field and you can see the points will increase. There's this um, whole value added bonus. This opens the gate as it says right there and they're talking about this little wire gate right here. If this gate swings over here then instead of your ball being tanked and going down the drain It'll come over here and you can shoot it again. So basically it's a ball save. Okay, we're going to try handing this up. For uh, I realize the play, the play field is turned funny for you, but it's the only way to get the whole thing on screen without constantly moving the camera. Okay, I didn't get any of the gates up there. So the point values are kind of low. down. So there was ball one. It valued up all the bonus scores and it uh, reset everything. Okay, now we got A. That's good. The middle one's the hardest one to get. Oh, couldn't save it. Didn't get any of the gates that time. And because I never got in that hole, that didn't open, so I lost the ball. This is ball four. And ball four is gone. Here's the last ball. This will be ball five. Okay, I got that little gate open I told you about. Now hit A again. And we're out of that. So, 
That would be the fall, five balls, not a very good game, 34,960 on the points. So we can see, nothing to write home about there. That is pretty much it. Have I left anything out? I guess this is also, this would be the last year the Gottlieb or anyone was all electrical mechanical with the bells and the chimes. Going on from there, for example, into pinball pool, they started using electronic tones. This doesn't quite make it into where you have the digital speech and talking or anything. It's, this will sound more like a Pong machine. Um, what else? This particular machine originally was in Seattle down on the uh, wharf on the pier. And I got it, so I had to do a lot of major rebuilding, uh, scraping of rust, re-chroming of parts, and making new plastic parts for the play field and whatnot. It had a long life. And I think that's about it for Duratron.